one beyond my wildest dreams. Maybe that boat could have carried me to streets of gold. Things aren't always as they seem. Okay, okay, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt the guys. I forgot to turn on the song this morning. So, Facebook, please don't silence us in some parts of the blah, 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 because I was playing the song I don't have the rights to. Uh, anyway, but uh, this song of One Street Over, we have the rights to play because we could. So, uh, anyway, but I just want to play that. I have some people go, why do you play that every morning? It's like the number one thing is on. And that's when we make our show. And uh, so that, that's appropriate. But also, too, it's one of those songs that the, the people who reach our friends with some of these songs good. And so that makes Facebook happy. And that's what we do, of course, broadcast on Facebook. And uh, anyway, hi, y'all. It is Friday. It is officially my last day of school as a first year teacher. Uh, Rachel Culver's in the house. Sister, say hello. hello. I just want to make sure your mic's on. Pull that mic right up to you there. Make sure we got to talk right into it. But uh, anyway, uh, we were coming in and Rachel's like, how was your first year? I said, I'm running late. So let's get in there because I'm always late. You know how that is. I'm just like, I live two miles away. But I just have so many things I want to do in the morning. And, and here's the thing. It's all Bible study stuff, man. I just, ever since I had my friend Shannon Baumgartner, who was on Wednesday with Lee Marie. I got to go back and listen to that show. Because Lee Marie was filling in for me for my kindergarten graduation with my grandson. But she was, she was basically challenged me to give God my first fruits every morning. And I started doing that and I'm just obsessed. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just am always digging for something to mm -hmm. study. And my last thing, my, my latest thing is the Bama pop podcast. If you have not discovered Bama, B-E-M-A, start at the beginning. Don't jump in in the middle, wherever they are. But it's one of those things that's just caught fire. I mean, it really has. It's kind of, uh, this guy was like, I've got this material. Material, and so he started putting it out there, and people started listening and telling this. It was very grassroots, and so it and it's amazing. And I'm not saying that there's he he really bends your mind. I don't know that there's things that I would say I disagree with yet. It's just things I've never even thought about or even thought to study that I want to go dig deeper in. But it's wow, it's one of those things, and so I'm just into that all morning. What are you doing? Uh, well. When you start praying for a mass amount of souls to be saved, mm. the enemy is going to attack you. So there's been a lot of spiritual warfare um, in our ministry lately. And so I've been deep into Ephesians, the armor of oh, God. Oh, man, yeah. And um, so I brought my thoughts and prayers and insights on that today and thought we could talk about witnessing and how that's mm. actually a battlefield. And so because that's just where I am. I know it, and I love you, and I was talking about you at, um, oh, you know what? I, I had to teach at Celebrate Recovery on Wednesday night, and I told the story about you with um, the Subway and the woman that was it in Subway in yeah, like Walmart, was. and yes. then you're like, the spirit goes, go get her a gift. You know, and I yes. told that story because we're just talking about how that you just have to, we were talking about forgiveness yeah. and how you could have been like, oh, this woman's being rude and this woman's being, she just was, you know, not on her game and you were in a hurry and it's like the tendency, hum, human tendency is to go, you're not doing your job well. But the spirit said, go buy her a gift. And you did. And she was in a broken place mm -hmm. and you had no idea. And you've just got to follow God's leading on that. Right. And and we, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because I want you to share what you've got here because that's that's part of the spiritual warfare. She was going under spirit. She was in, she was in a place of warfare. Mm -hmm. And if we'll keep our minds open to like, Lord, show us when people are, are needing us and they're in this place of spiritual warfare where they just need us to, to put some love on them. And uh, you did that. And so I, I just, I hope that, you know, um, just telling you, I love you, sister. You're anointed by God. You hang in there, putting some love on you as you're under your spiritual battle. Yeah. So, cause I mean, uh, there's, there's no greater prayer than first thing you said. One of the first things you said is how's Elijah, my Elijah and that prayer. We, we just calling him into being one of these souls that are, is going to come back. Absolutely. Year. Yeah. And um, anyway, I'm going to shut up. So yeah. what do you want to share, sister? <clears throat> well, I have been teaching a class on witnessing this spring because in the springtime at Bethlehem Baptist Church, we do what we call crash courses. Okay. And these are just classes that we offer our congregation to equip them to be better disciples of Christ and to, <clears throat> excuse me, become more like Christ. And so 
I was able to partner with a man in our church named Martin Morgan. You may know Martin. He's heavily involved. I think he, he has a political title here in Springfield, something about maybe a commissioner. I'm not sure. Or, yeah. Anyway, he's a great maybe, guy. Incredible. He, he was yeah. actually a missionary in Ireland um, for nine years and is a part of our team that is going to Ireland on a mission trip at the end of June. So mm-hmm. super excited about that. But he and I co-taught a class on witnessing. Um, and one of the lessons that was presented to our, our students was how witnessing is a battle. And this is really cool to me because the material I used to teach the class was material straight from my dad who taught these classes in the 70s and early Mm -hmm. 80s. He's not with us anymore. My dad was older when I was born, so I didn't um, have him for as long as I wanted. Um, But he passed in 2009. But he was just an incredible man of God, uh, a mighty evangelist, and he taught others how to witness and share their faith. It was the passion of his life, and he definitely faithfully um, gave that to me as well. And um, so... Um, we, there's this whole lesson that we, we taught our students about how witnessing is a battle. Mm-hmm. And so the, it was a three part and there's the call to battle, the preparation for battle and the weapons for battle. And I don't, I don't think people understand, um, I think in general, um, people in congregations and church don't understand that when you, um, go to witness for Christ, like to you are a witness. Witnessing is not something you do; it's something you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, when we are uh, witnesses for Christ, you're actually on a battlefield because you're taking back enemy territory, and mm-hmm. you are being a part of the restoration of all things, um, and the kingdom of heaven coming to earth and connecting heaven and earth, being that minister of reconciliation. I think it's second Corinthians um, that calls us ministers of reconciliation. You are literally supposed to be connecting men with their God because Jesus deserves the reward of his suffering. Mm -hmm. And so when you enter into that and when you give yourself over to surrender to that call, which is the call on every believer, this is not just a spiritual gift imparted to some, It is the great commission, and it is what Jesus told us to do right before he ascended into heaven. Um, It's how we, uh, the Apostle Paul says, fill up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Is anything lacking? Like, did Jesus not fulfill? That's not what that means. To to say that there's something lacking in Christ's suffering doesn't mean that he didn't finish the work. It means what is lacking is the delivery of the message. So when we fill up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ, it's being faithful to the commission he gave us to spread the gospel, to give the good news to the world and to be the witness. Um, he, and that's what he said. Remember, witnessing is something we are, not something we do. He said, you will be my witnesses. Um, so it's a battle because it's spiritual warfare. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've shared our story about the rainbows and the the number two and how God has been speaking to us so heavily still is through those things, through some signs, through the wonders of, of, of people being saved. And even recently, um, and, and last year, let me go back last year, I just, again, praying for spiritual revival and awakening, even out of tragedy last year and how he showed up in a sign from the heavens. Um, to us through through a moon rainbow when we asked for it at 222 and he gave it to us at 2222 um and that's just a incredibly short synopsis for anyone who that's might be amazing. a, a new too, listener yeah. but it, the point is is that God has radically confirmed with Rima word and his obviously his logos word he has confirmed in a hundred different ways that he is doing this Mm -hmm. and so we talked last year um in our ministry at bethlehem about how you know we are asking god to save 128 souls now that's just a number that represents 128 the day that our Pitts family went home to be with the Lord in that tragic way and we're just declaring life out of death that's all that is he can save 
a million souls. Like we we want yeah. more than that. We're just he's we're just claiming him as the God of one twenty eight because he's bigger than any tragedy we will mm-hmm. face. He's bigger than anything, right? So as we are praying, uh, receiving this confirmation from this sign in the sky, knowing he said, "I'm with you," I'm saying yes to you, and my favor is on you. And we begin praying. You're the God of one twenty eight. Save one hundred and twenty eight souls. And the the day that he showed us that sign from the heaven was the first of those salvations. Our sister yeah. Jesse Lumpkin gave her heart to Christ that night. And we've had several since, not as many. I, I was hoping for a flood even almost immediately. But what we've immediately actually entered into was spiritual warfare. So intense. It has been a, a very intense six to seven months. Um, and so... But it wasn't unexpected. It was just, I think, even for me personally, I think it was just a little more intense than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. But um, I don't know why I shouldn't have been surprised. The Lord did warn us, you know, Satan knows his time is short and he's furious. And that's not even in the ultimate sense. Like he knows that Christ will come back. He knows all of the words of the scripture better than we do. And they, tr- he and his demons tremble at it. They know and believe and they tremble. Uh, the scripture says, and so he knows his time is short and he's furious. But I think even in regards to sees it, like, like things that are happening in individual bodies, I think, you know, I think the enemy also saw the moon rainbow. <laughs> yeah. I think there, the activity in the heavenlies that happens when God puts his favor on his people and he says, I am saying yes to your prayers. And he starts moving and working. And uh, Jesse gives her heart to Christ and Satan loses that battle with her and ground gained. And, uh, you know, these things are happening. I think even in that regard, he recognizes my time is short here, like in this Mm -hmm. body and I am furious. And so really it has just been an all out onslaught. So that's what we are talking about when we call witnessing the battleground, a battleground. Um, and, and I think too, I think it's why people are afraid. Like there's, there's fear. Uh, my witnessing class, my crash course class, even at Bethlehem was the least attended crash crash course. And I don't know all of the reasons why for that. I had a great group and man, we went out two by two. We, we, we did the thing like God was so good. People were told the gospel. Women uh, um, were trained. Uh, it was incredible. Um, and they were faithful. And God's going to, you know, we'll see people in heaven someday that we don't even know will be fruits of our labor. Uh, but it was, it was the least attended crash course. And I think one of the reasons for that is that people are afraid. They're afraid of witnessing and what even I think what they think it is and a lot of that is just it well it is straight from the enemy mm-hmm. because he wants to paralyze us in that way and um I just want today to be an encouragement for the body of Christ for men and women who say they love Jesus to be encouraged if you love Jesus what does he say if you love me you will obey my commands mm-hmm. and his command to us is to go into all of the world and preach the good news and baptize in his name and make disciples be his witnesses unto the ends of the earth mm-hmm. and so um so we we to to follow that command and to be kind of just aware if you're afraid of it, if you're fearful of it, that's a scheme of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, I have been, by the grace of God, I have been actively witnessing because uh, largely due to the example of my father um, for since my early teen years. And I can literally count. So please be encouraged if you've always wanted to do this, but you've been afraid. I can count on my hand one hand, the amount of times that someone has outright rejected my offer to share the gospel with them. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. It is far more often that I will ask a waitress or someone at the park, whatever the context is, can I share with you the good news of Jesus? I have on one, less than five times had someone tell me, no, I can't. That is the truth. And that is so in keeping with what Jesus said. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Mm-hmm. 
People want to hear good news. Yeah. They do. And God will set you up. You're not going into battle by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> he has gone before you. He is with you. He is behind you. And Jesus, the whole work is finished in him. He's saying, get up into me, the shaft of that arrow. We've talked about this before. I will send you out and you will hit bullseye if you are found in Christ. Just trust me, rest in me, and be obedient. Walk obediently. And so... Also in our class, our witnessing class, I, I told the our students that um, one of the things I have always thought about in regards to witnessing, I learned in soccer as a teenager. I had a really great soccer coach in high school, and he used to get so frustrated with us if we played a game where we did not get shots off on goal. And um, if we were more like playing keep away or whatever, he, he would get so angry with us. And he would always say, if you do not take a shot, you will never make a goal. Like he, and he, he didn't even care, honestly, if we made the goal every time it was just shoot on the goal. And that has so translated into my spiritual walk. Mm. If you do not share your faith, you will never see someone come to Christ. Mm -hmm. You will, it honestly, if, if you don't share your faith, a faith that you have, you need to do some introspective heart searching and ask yourself if you have that faith, because it is a natural outpouring of faith in Christ to share it with somebody else. Mm -hmm. We readily share everything we care about and that we think is awesome. Well, if we have a good coupon to a restaurant, we'll share with some, like, I mean, come on, we, we're not, we're not bad at witnessing. We witness about everything all the time. Very good point. It's about what are we witnessing? Mm -hmm. What, what is our testimony? What is coming out of our mouth? What is Mm -hmm. our life? What are we doing? And so, um, to give ourselves over to Christ in that way is it, it, and to take those shots on goal and just to be faithful in that you will see people come to Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, recently, and it was a part, honestly, at the beginning of this class that I taught, it was a part of a challenge I gave to them. We gave, Martin and I gave the students a very easy way to share the gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, it's with one Bible verse. Uh, you just simply use Romans six twenty three that says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And you take that one Bible verse and you can literally share everything someone needs to know to make a decision in their heart for Christ in 60 seconds. It's a beautiful tool to have in your back pocket. Uh, all you need is um, a pen and a napkin or something. So I was at a restaurant. Um, at, this was the first, second week of our class. And we we uh, challenged our students to use that tool, Romans 6, 23, to share the gospel with somebody that week. Mm-hmm. Even if it was a grandchild, mm-hmm. it, just share with someone. Start talking about Jesus. Because yes, our life has to be our evangelism. but if your words aren't coming out your mouth, <laughs> you have yep. to also speak it. So um, anyway, so so that was the challenge. And uh, I went out with friends that same week to see a movie. And afterwards, we went to Buffalo Wild Wings um, to have dinner. And I knew that night I had just committed to the Lord. It wasn't even uber, uber spiritual in the way that God said, Rachel, tonight, share your faith. No, I just, I just committed to the Lord. Lord, I'm, I'm going to share my faith with the waitress tonight, period. Yeah. Um, sometimes you don't have to pray about, is this God's will? Because he's already told you to do it. Mm-hmm. It was God's will for me. Like at any moment, if I share the gospel with somebody, it is God's will. That's already been commanded. So I'm walking in his will just in obedience, period, to say, I'm going to share the gospel with somebody tonight. And I knew that my waitress would probably be a great opportunity because it often is. Mm -hmm. So I started out with uh, what I usually do at a restaurant situation. One of the easiest ways to open the conversation is to, and I think I've said this before, we are about to pray for our meal. Is there anything we can pray for you about Mm. that? Just, and normally they will tell you something. Yeah. And, um, I've, I've rarely had people say, no, I'm good. Um, there's always something going on in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And so, plus they want a good tip. So they're going to placate a little bit and it opens the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, so she did, she said, yeah, actually I'm going, uh, she was a young, young girl, maybe 18, 19. She said, I'm going on a spring break trip, uh, coming up soon and I want to make enough money so I can have a good time. And I want to have, I don't want to have a good time. So if you could pray for that, that'd be great. I was like, I will absolutely pray for that. 
And so we did, and then she brought us our drinks. And this is just a, one of the beautiful ways that God just sets you up sometimes. She, we all ordered water and Buffalo Wild Wings, their cups are huge. <laughs> Yeah, they were monsters. And uh, she goes to put our four waters on this tiny table, and it hits the edge of the table, and they go, the all of those waters go everywhere oh, into no. all of our laps. Oh, no. And she is mortified. And oh, we, bless her. I know. Oh. But we had this opportunity to just be like, even though it was, I was so cold. <laughs> You're soaked. Soaked. Oh, my goodness. But it was awesome. I knew in that moment, because I had already set my heart on being obedient and had already had a yeah. goal that by the end of our time at that restaurant, I was going to have shared Romans 6.23 with her. I already was in, my head was in the game, right? Right. And so when that happened, I just like winked at God. I was like, I see what you're doing. Because what happened was he brought her defenses completely down. Yeah. She made like a really bad mistake as a waitress, right? And so she already felt like, oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> what have I done? And we were able to obviously be like, it is not a big deal. We helped her clean it up. Yeah. I mean, it was just this moment that connected us and all, it was already a moment of grace for her. Yeah. And so we were able to just connect immediately over that and, you know, kind of poked at it, you know, yeah. do you want some more water? I don't know if we want more water, you know, it's just, like, yeah, had like fun baptism. with her. Yes. There you go. <laughs> that, actually, that was one of the jokes. Yeah. She you just kept, baptized us. Exactly. Yeah. She kept That's apologizing right. and one of the, one of us at the table said, "That's okay. It was like a baptism. <laughs> That's right. Just getting us, you know, going through the mikvah, <laughs> getting ready to, you know, we're just going to be real going orthodox, going through, you know, the cleansing before we eat you know so I'm just saying. by the end of the meal she was more than happy to give me 30 seconds of her time because her. she was already in that play yeah. you know and so uh I can't remember what her name was um and so she she was cleaning up and she was like is there anything else I can do for you guys and we were like we're good thank you and she started to walk away and I said hey can you come over here and um I had I actually had an envelope for some reason, I never have envelopes, but I had an envelope. My mom had given me something, and so I had an envelope in my purse, uh, one of those little rectangular white ones, and I had put a bunch of cash in it, gave her a great tip, which, that you know, this is another way the Lord just set that up. Uh -huh. Did she technically deserve a great tip? Probably not. Yeah. But I was just more than happy to give it you to bet. her. Yeah. And then I had this end too because I was able to say, listen, not only am I going to pray for you to have a great spring break, I'm going to give you extra cash so you can have a great, like, yeah. God just set the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the back, so I put cash in that envelope and then I knew I, I didn't want her to get in trouble. Obviously, I'm going to respect boundaries, respect where she is and who she is. Um, not going to endanger her job just to to share with her. And so uh, I even cut it shorter by writing on the envelope, Romans 623, and drawing the illustration and everything. So it actually only took me 30 seconds. I didn't want mm -hmm. her to be seen by a boss or something staying at a table too long. And so I, I had already done that. It was prepped. I'd done that during the meal at some point when she was not at the table. And uh, I said, hey, uh, can you come over here? I'd like really like to share something with you really quick. And so she came over and I showed her the envelope and I said, hey, listen. And she, she was over my right shoulder looking down at it. I said, hey, listen, inside this envelope is a, a good bit of cash for you to have a great time on your spring break. And I'll continue that you have a safe and good trip. I said, but even more important than that, I said, is this right here? And I read Romans 623 to her. I said, this is going to be really quick. I assured her. Uh, I said, but I have to share it with you because I cannot imagine what my life would be like if someone had never shared it with me. Mm. And so um, I, I took her through it really quick. And she like, she um, it, she didn't cry, but she uh, got a, a emotional. You could tell that she almost teared up. And she just looked at me and she said, I have not been to a church since I was in sixth grade. Wow. And she just looked at me very sincerely and she said, Thank you for sharing this with me. Mm. Mm. Did she pray to receive Christ right then and there? No, mm. but our job is to plant and to water and yep. God will give the increase. Mm -hmm. And so however and whenever she took that money and spent it, she thought about Romans 6.23. She did. And if she ever, ever spills a glass of water again, she's going to think about the grace. You know, like God did so yeah. many things in that moment just to say, I am blessing your obedience, Rachel. Like God blesses obedience. Yeah. He does. Mm -hmm. That is who he is. And so um, anyway, so that's just a, a 
a glimpse from my recent um, days walking with the Lord and just seeing once again his faithfulness in the battle that he calls us to battle, that when we prepare ourselves for it, because I, I prepared even in a small way, you know, just to already have it written out. Little preparations, just all of these things. And then the weapons of his word and of just loving, being able to give grace, even when it might not, you know, obviously grace is getting affection and, and favor that's not deserved. And um, so I just, I don't know, God honors that. I want to encourage everybody. And then I'll, when we have a chance, I want to talk We're about the honor. I have to go to a break because I just looked at the clock and it is 728 and I've not done my first break yet. And Crooked Eye Tommy's on here and he's just saying good morning, says, and give it and it shall be given to you. Amen, brother. Love you. Love you, Tommy. Got to get you back in here. Talk about the Blues Festival soon. Uh, right now, we're going to jump over. We're going to talk about Cumberland Connect. You want to be a part of the Gig Club. Gwen's coming in, sitting down. She's part of the Gig Club. And there's just all kinds of folks getting into the Gig Club. Uh, Rachel, have we talked about, or do y'all have Cumberland Electric? Um, not yet. Not yet. But we're just, well, Cumberland Electric, if you've got, if you're a Cumberland Electric customer, you're going to have access to Cumberland Connect, which is high-speed internet, and cannot say enough about how essential it is in this day and age, because so many of us do things from home. I'm going to be doing a lot of work from home this summer because I'm a teacher and I got a lot of stuff I got to learn. I'm very excited for fall, but I got a lot of work to do. And this Cumberland Connect is going to be essential to allowing me to, to, to do some work on all my Adobe Suite programs that I'm teaching the kids and they take a lot of they take a lot of internet speed so um, I've got that you can get it too you can get a gig for 80 bucks but if you're somebody that's you're like man that's a lot of money to me well there's an affordable connectivity program that provides qualifying households with monthly credit to help pay for internet services and if you're eligible you could receive a credit of up to $30 per month toward broadband services they've got a package that starts at 30 bucks guys you can connect with them at cumberlandconnect.org or 1-800-987-2362 800-987-2362 or cumberlandconnect.org. Put in your zip code to see if maybe they're already in your neighborhood and you could get hooked, could you could get hooked up next week. Who knows? That quick you could be surfing the interwebs with high speed internet. And when you do, please let them know that you can send you. And getting back into the show, Miss Gwen Harder has joined us. And uh, hey. hello, hello, hello. I've got a, just one thing I want to chime in on. With, I know you've been listening uh, to Rachel. I've I got two had, questions for her. I will, and I just want to chime in. And I think I've shared this with you guys before. You're talking about how that you know the enemy's out there and he's mad and all this. And I love the quote from C.S. Lewis. It, we are living in enemy-occupied ter- mm-hmm. territory. That is what this world is. Christianity is the story of how the rightful king has landed. You might say landed in disguise and is calling us to take part in a great campaign of sabotage. Yep. I love that quote. Yep. But um, anyway, you had two questions I for? do. I was Go listening for it. as I was listening. I was listening when I was driving in, and it's like, okay, first of all, you had asked her to pray before the water. I'd asked her what her prayer request was right. before the water. So now she knows you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how important is your reaction to something like that? Yes. So it's like, yeah. So it's like God puts you in this position to now show who you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many people would just be upset? And People have been going angry oh, and no, it's okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's the difference. It'd be like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's you fine. It's I'm fine. Fine. I'm fine. Yeah. And you and they know you're not right. Yes. Or you could just right. say, "Oh, honey, let me give you a hug. I'm yeah. so sorry that yeah. happened to you." Right. And you, you know and, that's the difference. You know, that's and and that and that's what we're supposed to show. Yeah. And the other thing is, you gave her the money for a spring break trip. We all know what spring break trips are. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I wonder. We don't know. He does, but we don't know. Did that witnessing keep her from doing something really stupid? You bet. You know, yeah. did she, did she go in, did she go down there with a bunch of girlfriends thinking, okay, you know, it's drinking and wild stuff and, and did, did something in the back of her mind go, eh, maybe I won't, maybe I won't take that next, you know, cocktail mm-hmm. that comes my way. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like the things that you plant, your reactions to things after you've already committed to, yeah. I'm a Christian, say, more words than you could possibly mm-hmm. possibly yeah. tell them. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I love that. And I mean, that's that's a really good point is if you had reacted badly mm-hmm. after praying for her, right. yep. what would she have done? She'd been like, yeah, you Christian. <laughs> right. Yeah, yep. sure. You yep. know, it, it's, yes. just, it's just that being Christ. Are you being Christ? Are you showing? But, but God set up that whole are? thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you showing come. who you are? Or are you just saying who you are? And, and that, that's, uh, I always go back to that. It's like, God, don't make yourself look stupid. 
<laughs> you know, he's so I mean, faithful. I don't, I don't mean that disrespectfully, <laughs> but in the Bible, it's, I mean, they say, you know, Paul even doesn't, is, doesn't Paul say, you know, don't, don't make me do something that makes you look bad. Yeah, there's a constant callback to God does what he does for his own namesake. Right. And so since he's already stated that, Moses does it a lot. Yeah, the Moses, prophets yeah. do it. Like, mm-hmm. it's all through the Bible where he's like, for your namesake, God, remember your promises right. for you do yeah. this. For your yeah. name. Like, yeah. there's a constant callback to that because mm-hmm. God is concerned about his reputation. Yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. rightly so. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, and, he's, and, he, and he calls on us, you know, quote me quote me, you know, call, mm-hmm. call them, make your prayers, pray my word to Jesus did that all the mm-hmm. time, all the time, went back to scriptures and, and would, you know, share the word, share the words. And because uh, he is the Torah. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is mm-hmm. the Torah. Well, like you talking about bringing your first fruits in the morning. Uh, I mean, the Lord says, bring your tithes to the storehouse. See if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on you that you can't even contain. Right. Yeah. Yep. And that's not just, it is about your money because sure we cannot serve all the currency things. of this yeah. world in any shape, form or fashion and mm-hmm. serve him at the same time. Right. So yes, there is that, but it's the first fruits of everything in our life. Mm-hmm. Am I going to be first in every way? Am I, am I going to be your first thought when you wake up in the morning? Am I going to be the first words coming out of your mouth? Am I going to be your first priority sitting Sitting at a table with a, a waitress or waitress or a waitress waiter or a waitress that cannot talk that might not know me. Are you going to put me as the center? Mm-hmm. And so the first fruits should invade every area of our life. And if we will do that in every way, He will pour out blessings and open the windows of heaven to do it yeah. and mm-hmm. give us what we can't. E- we won't even be able to handle it, like the fish in the net with the disciples. They couldn't even contain them. And so, and that's what we're going to continue to believe even through this time of spiritual warfare is that God has said, yes, I honor you. Yes, I will give you spiritual awakening and revival. Yes, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. I'm doing this. I will see to it. And you keep standing and pressing on, which is why I was until the wee hours of the morning, honestly, last night, even still fighting through this battle currently, um, just in the word, reminding myself of the armor of God, putting it on. And one of my favorite uh, professors, one of my favorite professors, like you say, you have so many in your life, is Dr. Randall Smith. And he um, he's part of GCBI out of Sebring, Florida. And he does awesome one hour, one book um, summaries of the Bible books. And he's just incredible. He's a great teacher. And his synopsis of Ephesians and the way he um, commentates on uh, the, the armor of God is just incredible. And so much insight. And I wanted to share it with you guys. So... Mm-hmm. Do we have time for that? Uh, let me go ahead and do another break. I just want to, one, one point I want to make that just, I, I don't know if you've thought of this, but you probably have. You know how we talk about the remez of scripture right. where something happens here and then it happens here as a redemptive kind of thing. One example is where uh, whenever Moses came off of, of, of the mountain with the, the commandments and they were worshiping uh, the, the golden first cap. edition. Yeah, the, the first. And and there was 3,000 that were, that were killed as a result. And then we have 3,000 saved on the day of Pentecost. Mm-hmm. It's yes. a remez. And that 128 to me is a present day oh, remez. remez. That's yeah. beautiful. You know I know what I mean? thought about that, but that but, is yeah, beautiful. To me, that's just, that's what that is. Yes. It's, it's, it's that restoration of the 128, the 128. Yes. It's a, it's a, Redeeming. That's yeah. exactly and, um, what it is. So anyway, I don't know. That's just keeps spinning in my head. Let me let me go ahead and do another break real quick, and let's talk about Corbin Creek Greenhouse Gifts and Gardening Center. Uh, great friends. I love going out and talking to them. I've got to get out there. I was talking to Brian Pulley yesterday. He's got his garden just growing beautifully. Got all of his bedding plants at Corbin. Uh, just I've had several people that have gotten their bedding plants there and just got absolutely beautiful gardens as a result. And uh, I just love going out and talking to them and, and getting something beautiful for my my yard because I've got several spots that are bare because we had that um, the polar vortex came in. It killed all my English ivy. Now it's coming back on the ground, but all that I had hanging up is gone. Uh, I've got several shrubs that are gone. Now I can put some ferns or something like that in in its place just to give me uh, some instant life. I'm going to go out and get some vines to put on some areas where I had uh, my English ivy just to kind of fill in the void until it can start coming back. But 
if you've got an issue in your yard or garden, go and talk to Amy about it, and she can point you in the right direction, whatever you're needing to find. Of course, they've got their vegetable garden growing. They put up a picture yesterday of Miss Jane out with the grandsons, a couple of the grandsons getting the garden going. I'm telling you, get out in your yard. You want to see what's the, the secret to long life. Go ask Miss Jane. She's out there with a hoe in her hand in her 90s. Uh, just love her. And you can go inside the shop and get some of her handmade aprons and pot holders and uh, all kinds of fun stuff that's inside the shop. And you can also go in and talk to them about the CBD products that really helped me with my arthritis. Corbin Creek Greenhouse Gifts and Gardening Center. 4920 Highway 161, all the things you need for your yard, all the beautiful things you need for your home. They've got them. Go by and tell them that the new term sent you. Right back into the show now. Go ahead. Rachel is going to, to share with us what, uh, go ahead and unpack it so everybody knows what we're doing here and then get going here. So the message of Ephesians, uh, Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, uh, is basically sit, walk, stand. And Watchman Nee, um, he was a, a Chinese man, incredible author. He actually ended up dying for his faith and being imprisoned for a long time. And I always will, always will plug his book, Sit, Walk, Stand, when I'm talking about Ephesians, because it's probably my favorite exegesis of that book. Um, but you you wouldn't think about that progression being um, the normal uh, progression, at, you know, in any shape, form, or fashion. You don't sit first and then walk first and then stand. <laughs> Uh, but that is actually the progression for a believer in Christ, for someone coming to the faith and becoming who they are created to be in Christ. You sit, you're positionally made holy. We're seated with Christ in the heavenlies. And so that's the call of the believer. We're chosen, adopted. We have an inheritance in Christ. We're seated in Christ. We're citizens of heaven and we're instated with powers. Um, our identity is what we live out of. You, um, Your call is your identity. And you live out of who you are. Um, your actions, um, let's see, I wrote it down, so I'll just read it. Your call is your identity. You act because of who you are. Um, your actions don't determine you. Like, for what, for example, at the judgment seat of Christ, people will say, I did this in your name. I did this in your name. I did this in your name. And he will look them in the eye and say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. It is not about what you do. It is about who you are. And those of us who have been called, who are seated in Christ, will live out of that um, in a real way and with integrity. And then the walk. So um, the next thing that the letter to the Ephesians talks about is the conduct of a believer, how we walk. And over and over again, he uses the word walk. He says to walk worthy in 4.1, to walk distinctly in 4.17, to walk in love, 5.2, to walk as children of light in 5.8, and to walk as wise in 5.15. So this walk, our conduct, like hearkening back to the example of us with the waitress, our conduct is everything mm -hmm. we've stated who we are we're already living out of that and then our conduct will be proof that that is who we are Sad. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. then so you sit you walk and then you stand and that is and that's in the context of ephesians 6 when he gets into paul does this spiritual warfare this battle that we're in um and because you don't have to go look if you are living for god you don't have to go looking for the fight it's coming to you mm -hmm. right and so, um, so I wanted to quickly get to chapter six, the armor, because Randall Smith is his, his, um, exegesis of this is just gorgeous because he's a lot like Christy McClellan in the cultural context and what was actually going on and what Paul actually was envisioning when he said this to the original hearers. And so he begins obviously with the belt of truth and the belt that a Roman soldier would wear would have a protective piece over his privates. Mm -hmm. because he said because think about how ridiculous it would be to leave the most vulnerable spot on a man's body exposed like he could take down a hundred men but a little boy could come up and kick him and disable him immediately <laughs> how ridiculous would that be and so he said the belt actually had a provision for that and um he said so in the same way as paul uses this physical metaphor for spiritual truths this belt of truth he said do you understand that your truth is the most vulnerable part of who you are as a christian mm -hmm. yes. he said and if you are not careful the enemy will give you a swift kick in the truth yep. and take you out because mm -hmm. that is who he is and it is literally the only weapon he has he is the father of lies and when he lies he's speaking his native tongue 
That's what happened to Adam and Eve. Yes. That's what happened. That's, that's the, what's happened to my son. Yes. It's, they, he, they have attacked his truth. Mm. And it's, yes. it's just exactly what you just said. You question yourself. They, they, you question your beliefs. Everything. And I yep. walked through that too. But if you, and as I, I'll tell anybody who's struggling, you will find what you're seeking. And if yep. you want to seek lies, you're just going to keep getting lies. That's yep. right. But if you really want the truth, then seek it. Yep. Then seek it and pray about it. Yep. Whether you believe or not, Pray over it and say, God, if you are real, show me truth, and He will. Yes. Get ready; He will blow you away. But you got you got to be seeking it. You got to be seeking it because the enemy's out there giving, just feeding you all this nonsense. And if this, I'll share yeah. this too, because just talking about lies and the spirit of deception, it reminds me. Um, and I'll I'll put the because I can't think of the reference right now. Maybe y'all will. Um, I'll put the reference underneath our Facebook post about this um, this broadcast, but we find a through one of the prophets to one of the kings of the the northern tribes of Israel i think it's in second kings we find this snapshot of a moment of in heaven where one of the kings is evil and he has already given his ear over to false prophets to the prophets of baal so on and so forth and our god the god of heaven yahweh is so displeased with this man but this man this king of israel has set his face against the lord and is, is just like you said, he sought out liars, and that's who he's given his ear to. Mm-hmm. And I hope this strikes holy fear into somebody right now. Our God in heaven, we get this snapshot of a prophet coming before this king and saying, you need to understand what's happened in the heavenlies in regard to you. Um, Yahweh, with his host, his heavenly host before him, the angels, he says, who will go put, because the, the man is asking, will I win this battle? I actually, I think it was Ahab. I'll go back and make sure that he says, will I win this battle that's coming up? And his false prophets are telling him, yes, we're going to win. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and so the prophet comes up before him and says, actually what's happening in the heavenlies right now is that God looked at his angels and said, who will go put a lying spirit into the mouth of his false prophets? And one of his angels said, I will do it. That needs to strike holy fear into somebody. Because God is the perfect gentleman. And if you want lies, he will give you what you ask for. Yes, he will. At at a certain point, there is a point, literally, and we see this over and over again in scripture. There is a point at which God just gives people what they ask for. Mm. He has been patient. He has been kind. He has come over and over again with the truth. But it has been rejected so many times times that he gives you over to the lives to the lies that um that you are proving is what you want Mm -hmm. and so um that's a scary thing so that is why the belt of truth is so important and listen again god blesses obedience Mm -hmm. and 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 also don't be encouraged if you are praying for loving someone who is currently believing lies every time we'll get to this in a minute too our offensive weapon is the sword of truth. It is the word of God. And we'll get there in a minute. But just be encouraged. Share the truth. Mm-hmm. His word cuts between soul and spirit, bone and marrow. There is nothing he cannot get to with his truth. And he needs us to be faithful to wield it and rightly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a belt of truth. And then he says he goes to the breastplate of righteousness. Um, and it's not um, positional righteousness. It's not the seated in the heavenlies with Christ. It's the practical righteousness that's being talked about here. Right choices. It is um, walking in your calling. It is making right choices. And that, that the making of right choices is what protects your heart, your vital organs mm. spiritually. Um, and so then he goes to strapping up your feet. This is literally how it reads. Strap up your feet in readiness with the good news of shalom. So the feet fitted with the gospel is literally strap up your feet in readiness with the good news of shalom. And shalom is not just peace. It is, but it is the restoration of all things. It's the complete how things should be. It is to make things right. And so when the Roman soldiers uh, would they, they had, um, he said they had shoes that they strapped from the top down. He said, but when they would go out into battle, there was often, um, mud to navigate and deal with on the battleground. And so they would strap from the bottom up with cleats. Mm. And he said it was a special type of 
shoe. It was a special thing that you strapped up onto your sandal and it was an undergirding of the soul. And that's what the soldiers were doing to navigate. And so in order for us to navigate on this battleground, we have to be strapped from the bottom up and undergirded with readiness to share, readiness to bring. And that is why the feet of those who bring the good news are so beautiful because um, they are ready. They are bringing peace, shalom, and restoration. Um, that is your, it's also, he said this too. I thought this was really beautiful that to stand in that is to stand in your identity mm-hmm. because that is the gospel. So you're actually standing in your identity. And then the shield of faith, and this is one of the ones that has just come to life for me in the, these recent months and months of spiritual warfare. But the shield of faith is not just a solo thing. It is not just a soldier with a shield uh, one-on-one in battle. He said the way that Roman soldiers used their shields was to create a front line and to lock arms behind those shields Mm -hmm. and, and to stand. And he said that they would let the enemy come all the way up to the front line. And, and that's where he actually says, so uh, just understand that you don't have to go looking for the fight. The enemy's coming to you. He's furious and he knows his time is short. Mm-hmm. And so he's just going to come attack. And he knows, too, that he can't unsave a believer. He know he, the, the enemy understands the security of the believer, of the true sold out believer, the child of God. He cannot unadopt you. He cannot rip your inheritance out of your hands. He can't, he can't do that, but he can attack you and he can lie to you and completely disable you mm-hmm. so that you're no good on the battlefield. Right. So that is his purpose and that is his goal. But if you will take the shield of faith and my sisters in Christ whew, and brothers, brothers, mm-hmm. but many sisters have just been with me lately at the altar of our church, praying this thing through. And that's the image that God has given us to lock arms in battle, our shields all becoming a united front. Mm -hmm. That is the shield. And let him, let him fight the battle for us. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do anything. And he will, and he will honor it when we stand Mm -hmm. in obedience, when we stand in our identity and when we do that. So, um, so, and then the next thing is the helmet of salvation. And this was really interesting. Um, he talks about, you know, uh, your mind being transformed, Romans 12, 2, um, that that is where you are transformed and made more like Christ. The battlefield really is in the mind. He talks about, uh, he joked and said, you know, a helmet will keep your head from swelling. So if you're constantly in your salvation, that is just humility right there. There's not a lot of room for pride when you're living in and walking out your salvation. And um, and the Bible says to do that, to walk it out with fear and trembling. And then he also said there were different plumages, different types of feathers on the helmets to recognize who was the captain yeah. and who was not. And he said, so for us to, um, to understand, and I, I'm taking this a step further. This is not necessarily Randall Smith. Um, it got, uh, Josh is doing a series on the path of a disciple. And so he's talking to us about how people can be a seedling and a young tree and all the way up to a sequoia. And you've got sages in the faith. Mm-hmm. And I, I just want to encourage, that's kind of what came to life for me last night as I was meditating on this. You look at someone who has the plumage <laughs> on their helmet of salvation of being worthy of being a captain, of being a sage of the faith. I like that, yeah. Of like Our how, professors. <laughs> how is that yeah. person, yeah. how is that person walking it out in the battle? Mm. Look at them. Are, they will be on their face. They will be fasting. They will be praying. They will be listening to the voice of their shepherd. They will not be giving their ear over to lies. Mm. And they will not be getting their butt kicked. Mm-hmm. They won't be. They might be tired. Yeah. They might be worn out, but they will be standing Mm. and they will be standing strong and they will be standing firm. So look at the plumage, the spiritual plumage on the helmet of salvation. I'm going to pause real quick. I'm going to go ahead and get another one of our breaks in. I'm going to talk uh, just for a minute. We're going to continue with Rachel and Gwen uh, in just a moment, talking about the things we could talk about all day, quite frankly. Uh, But I want to remind you to get out to the races this weekend. And you can go for free. Look for this newspaper. This is Let's Talk Trash. I'm going to be using this all summer because, honestly, grab a hold of these. This back page is worth 40 bucks. 
That's a $40 ticket. You can take the back of this page. Rachel's going, oh, I want to take my family to the races. And uh, you can take up to uh, six kids and two adults on this back page. And this is good throughout the entire 2023 race season. You can find these at Holman Jewelers. You can find them at the Guthrie Kitchen uh, Post Office, the F&M Bank. They handed them out in schools. They came out in the newspaper a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is from Debbie Keenan and uh, the Keenan Group, Debbie and Bob Keenan, they put this out. But this back page will get you into the races for free, and you're going to fall in love with what Jerry's doing out there at Veterans Motorplex. Follow them at Highland Rim Speedway on social media. They kept the Highland Rim Speedway page, but they update you on all things Veterans Motorplex, the races this weekend, and the gates will open at 4. And uh, just please get on out there and support them. They are great sponsors of this program. Love them so much. But there's your free ticket to the races this weekend. And when you go out there, you be sure and tell Jerry that you turn in chef. And we're talking about Highland Rim Speedway up there in Greenbrier. I forgot to give you the address. It is at 6801 Kelly Willis Road in Greenbrier. So go and see them this weekend. Go to the races. Let's get back to the show and continue on Miss Rachel Culver. Yeah, well, we're going to sum it up with the Sword of the Spirit. It's the last piece of armor that, um, that Paul talks about. And he talked about how um, you're not, when you're like in the battle line with your shields, right? With your brothers and sisters beside you. Um, he said, you're not pulling out at, at that point when the enemy is coming over your shield and breaking the line, so to speak. You're not going to come out with, sorry, I almost <laughs> ate it trying to do what you were asking me to do. Tell her to get closer to the microphone. People get excited and they forget to get right up on the microphone. <laughs> she just about knocked herself out with it. So, but I love this imagery. So you're, you're, you've got your shields. I'm going to get you back on track. Quit your giggles, girl. But anyway, I love you, sister. So when the enemy's coming over the line, he said, you're not pulling out a broad sword and doing, you know, this yeah. broad stroke yes. type of thing. He said, that's not what it is. The original uh, word here is Mahahira. I don't know if I said that right or not, but I tried really hard to get it down pat last night. But the original word means a dagger. So he said it was actually a Roman soldier would have a dagger strapped to the inside of their calf. Mm -hmm. And they would pull it out at that point. Because if you try to wield a broadsword at that point, you're going to kill your brother or sister. You're going to hurt people. You've got a dagger in your hand that you will then, at at close combat, get your enemy with. Um, And that is the sword of the spirit. Mm. The word of God. And it's not the logos or the logos word. It is rima. Some people pronounce it rhema, word of God. And that's the specific word. It's which means in regard to um, the word of God, the Bible, it means those words you have hidden in your heart that you have at the ready, like you would a dagger in your pants. Like Romans. Yeah. And it's, it's those. And it's also rhema is also the specific and personal words like a prayer answered from a moon rainbow. Yes, I will give you spiritual mm. awakening and revival. Mm. Those, the personal words that will never contradict with the word of God, but those personal words that you know he has spoken to you right. and the Rima words of scripture that you have hidden in your heart and both of those things that you can pull out in a moment's notice because you know what God has said and you are sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see and you will stand and that, and that will kill the enemy. Mm. It is his demise. And as I was um, just wrapping my thoughts up last night, the Lord just spoke something to me that he um, hasn't, just, he, he's never said to me before, and I'm sure I've heard it somewhere, and I'm sure somebody else has said it, but it was so powerful for me personally last night as I was just meditating on who he is, on who our enemy is. And he just said to me, he said, Rachel, I am the way, the truth, and the life. My enemy is the deviation, the lie, and the death. Mm-hmm. But he will not prevail. I'm the way. I am the gate. I am the way. Mm-hmm. But the gate of hell, the gates of hell will not prevail. Mm. And he just created this antithesis for me that I had not meditated on before in that way. Yeah. And it was it was so encouraging. And it was so beautiful for me. So I hope that all of that is encouraging to you as a believer, as a child of God. Know that you are seated in Christ. You are positionally made righteous and no one can take that from you. Know that you are to walk with conduct befitting that of someone worthy of the gospel. And then get dressed in your armor and stand. The battle Mm -hmm. is the Lord's. 
and he's one. Stay in it and wait on the Lord. Wait, because he will, there's a mighty victory mm-hmm. right around the corner. He mm-hmm. who sows in tears will reap with shouts of joy. Oh, I love that. I love you, sister, so much. You're so encouraging. I'll just, <laughs> I'll, I'll be listening to this again over the weekend as I catch up my Bible reading, by the way, my yes. daily Bible reading. Was, one of my first confessions is like, I'm behind Rachel. <laughs> and uh, she's like, it's okay, you'll catch up. But uh, I just love you guys so much. Any, I'm, I need to take one more break. I tell you what, let me let me do that, and we'll still have a few minutes on the other side of it. But I just want us to kind of wrap it up. We just seem to run out of time so fast because this is so good. As I finish, because i got to get to school this morning because uh, I've got some things going on this last day of school. Yay. I really, I'm going to ask you if we can't have a few Fridays where we have an extra hour. Yes! I think he might let us. us and I, I want Bill to come in here for an extra time sometime because I mean Bill Jones is just so much fun same thing with uh, Jack Martin just some of these these folks that we just love to just get some of these sages yeah 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 Yeah, y'all got I think we think Rachel's got Jack coming out to talk to them about going to Ireland Mm -hmm. and uh, you're just gonna love him he'll do it with an accent too yeah oh my gosh he's got the brogue (laughs) he's 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 a doll he's wonderful all right we're gonna talk we're gonna pause and talk uh, one more time about uh, one of our sponsors Barry and Rebecca Richards with the Exit Realty Garden Gate team two of my favorite people love them so much got to hang out with them last weekend at the Kilgore Station Bluegrass Festival now you'll just have to wait till next year to go but you can always sit down around the table with uh you can always sit down around the table if you want to uh, talk with Barry and Rebecca, and uh, they will help you no matter what's going on with real estate. If you are dealing with maybe a piece of property that needs to have some extra uh, photography or videography or maybe some drone footage, wouldn't that be great? Well, Barry's the one who taught me and my entire class to fly a drone. Uh, he is wonderful. He is so pours himself into the community, he and Rebecca. They're just great folks. You're going to find them sponsoring all kinds of events like the Blue Grass Festival because they're out there. They're Robertson County and they've been up in uh, Cross Plains for 27 years, over 27 years. And they specialize in Robertson County properties, but they also buy and sell in the surrounding counties and across the state line in Kentucky. You want to contact them, you can go to sellwithbecky.com, sellwithbecky.com or buy, B-U-Y, robertsoncounty.com or just give Becky a call, 615-504-7425, 615 615- Five zero four seven four two five. Tell them you turn sent ya back to the show, and uh, here we go. Let's get some parting thoughts in here. Who wants to start? Well, Gwen found the scripture reference that I was talking about. It is Ahab. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ahab and Jehoshaphat. First Kings, and he says, you know, he's talking to all of his advisors, and then they go, well, there's one more, and they mention his name. He's like, no, I don't want to talk to him. He always brings bad news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he always tells me what I don't want to hear. So. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure I didn't just get a text from Ilyu saying, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I, I, got, I got this random text that says, go for it. And I can't imagine anybody <laughs> sending me that because I it, the, the one thing when my text will pop up on the computer, it won't tell me who it is. It just gives me the message. So I think that was Ilyu going, sure. So I, I, I think he, because he loves it when we do this. He's like, that's what I want on yes. the show because he loves yes. this. He loves this, this, this just wrestling with the scriptures, you know, just understanding and that, just that digging through the scriptures. And I do too. I just yeah. love so yes. much. Yeah, it's so good. I love you. You got any parting thoughts for me, sis? Anything? I don't think so. Just be strong in the Lord and in the mm-hmm. power of his might. This is not by might, not by power, but mm-hmm. by my spirit. I love that. Yep. So. Hide those words in your spirit. I got to get better at doing that. Um, memorizing scripture that I need. The the Romans, um, what was the Romans? 2, 23? Uh, 12, 1 and 2. 12. About Yeah, the one that you shared with the right, righteous. Oh, 623. 623, Romans 623. 623. That's one I, I need to I need to memorize immediately mm-hmm. uh, this weekend. And I mean, it's, it's short. Yeah. It, yeah, it's so, short. Yeah, it has that's one. You needs better to believe know it does. Make and, a decision for Christ. I just need that. And especially if we're getting ready to go to Mexico. I need to learn that in Spanish. There you go. Espanol. Yeah. And this getting, weekend. For, yeah. Is Pentecost. That's right. Yes. Shavuot. And so. it's also, and, and let's just, you know, um, America, uh, it's Memorial Day. I'm going to do a mm-hmm. Memorial Day show Monday uh, because I, I, and I'm going to tell you the same stories I've told you over and over about my friend Kenneth that died in Vietnam and also my friend Donna Hagen's brother, Terry Smith, who died in Vietnam. And so I'm going to tell you those two stories. If you have something you want to share, you can send it to me and I'll share it as well. Mm-hmm. But I want us to pause. I, I, I can't sleep in on Memorial Day. I, I just got to be here to remind you that your freedom's not free. Yes. And, uh, but yes, Pentecost, 
Absolutely. Go connect with the Spirit. If you've not been to church in a while, this is the Sunday to do it. And Bethlehem Baptist would be a really good place. I love this place over at Bethlehem Baptist. You'd get to have this sweet lady as your your women's minister. And then you have also, or you're with the Messianic congregation. Mm -hmm. Tell them about that on Saturday. You could go Saturday and Sunday. There you go. If you wanted to. And uh, how can they connect with with your Uh, congregation? uh, Mosaic Fellowship. Okay. We're in in Goodlettsville. Okay, so. and and I'm part of the Madison Church of Christ meets on Sunday, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm still on staff there, and wonderful fellowship. There's this put it this way, you can find a place to find brothers and sisters that will walk with you through all this stuff, yes. and those are three recommendations right there. So pick one. And if you pick, if you Epiphany see Baptist here locally, yeah. I know those folks really well. I mean, there's so many places, guys. If you the seek the spirit, the spirit will guide you to you where you need find, to be. You yep. will find what you seek, guys, mm-hmm. and it's 802. So we got to go. Say bye. I love you guys. Bye. Get to church this weekend, you guys, and join me here for a special Memorial Day show here on 1100 WSGI. God bless. Have a great day.